Hello, my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those who are watching on live TV or those who are watching on um, social media. I want to just represent something real quick here with Executive Talk. We are talking about the heart and soul of your business. So as we get into this, prepare your heart. What is preparing your heart? Meaning it's very easy to take the show personal. And if it's hitting you personally, I want to make sure you understand it's probably trying to address something. Take that in for a minute. It's probably trying to address something. It's probably God trying to reach you right where you're at right now. Let it happen. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your cousin. Don't even look at your husband or wife. Stay, stay personal. And then figure out how you can influence those particular parties. Okay, because we are getting into something that's uh, very deep and the show hits a, a level that I, I don't even know because it did hit me in a certain way also. Because I remember this lifestyle, so this is what it's bringing up for me. But remember, we do want your comments. We do want you to follow. We do want you to click and like and love. And if there's a love button, we would love you to love it. Okay? <laughs> but I want you to have on Facebook, also on Twitter, also on YouTube. These are areas where we can have you communicate and ask questions. We can have you communicate and tell, tell us what this show did for you. We're also going to bring some comments from some previous shows here to our next show to actually see what people are talking about. And we're going to address them live. Okay? But again, the, the point is we want to communicate with you. We want to make sure that you know that you're being heard. Do not hold this in. <clears throat> this is the moment of breakthrough. If you have a company and you're in the middle of just everything that you have going on, you are in the middle of something emotional. <clears throat> and maybe this is going to address that moment right now. So let's explore. Let's open up. Let's, let's create a new paradigm. So what is this new paradigm? The business that survives. What does that mean to you when you first hear it? Sounds pretty good. For, for the people that are watching the se second episode, you probably are, uh-uh, no, it is not. You know, because I saw the last one and the way that you framed it. Uh-uh, no way. Okay, that's why they're in a separate place so they can't spoil it for everybody else. <laughs> Remember, the business that survives, you probably received it as something good. Okay, at least it survived through COVID. At least it survived through all this other stuff that's going on. I have a lot of crazy stuff going on in my life, but it's still surviving. That's a natural statement, isn't it? The question is, is that a good natural statement? Are we in a good place in life when we say we're good at surviving? I, I probably cued you in on where we're going with this show. So let's go ahead and pick up from where we left off in the last show. So that means that if you guys are just picking up now, that means it's important for you to go pick up the last show so you can get caught up with this show and everything can make sense. When you're in survival, there's a persistent dis dissatisfaction with life. Now, one of our, in, in our topic and what we discussed in our last shows, we talked about that program, The 600 Pound Life. If you're like me, you like to watch TV probably late at night, and you've probably seen this program. As I, as I framed it before, it's not a place of judgment. It's a place of understanding the, revel, the, the number one, the human body. Number one, it's amazing. The fact that you can do some of the things you do to it, and it's still kicking for you. Because half the stuff we've probably done to our body, we probably should be out of here. Let's be, very, let's be very transparent. But in that 600 pound life, there is, a, there is a life that's still happening because we're able to see that person. But one thing, one character that I'm noticing in that, in watching some of the people that are on there, there is a persistent dissatisfaction with life. Did you realize that every single one of them has some emotional impact earlier on in their years of life? And that's how they got to that particular state. Now, a lot of you that are watching could close your heart off at this moment and say, well, yeah, I, yeah, I've seen that. And, yeah, this is too bad. I'm not 600 pounds, so that doesn't apply to me. Well, let me ask you this question. Is it because it was their emotion that got them to that 600 pounds? Wasn't it? So just because you don't show it in weight, does that mean that you don't have the same challenge? So understand the connection here. That's just how it's showing up for them. There's a lot of us still 
having a 600 pound life. We just don't see it in the physical, in that physical way. So paint that picture and don't exempt yourself. Stay with me. The definition of survival is the state or fact of continuing to live or exist, typically in spite of an accident, ordeal, or difficult, circumstance, difficult circumstances. Now, when we discussed the last show, and as we're creating framework around now, survival is this right here. The state or fact of continuing to exist, because again, the definition of survival is live or or, so that means you have a choice there, doesn't it? But you can still remain physically alive. You can still be here or exist. Now, why is just existing such an issue? Because guess what? There's no purpose. It becomes an issue because when you just exist, there's nothing that's attaching life and reason for you. So everything becomes an impact around you. That's the struggle that survival creates personally. That's why it's a continuing on factor and people, you can't break through stuff because you're still stuck in this place of just existing. You have not lined up with the purpose or uh, a reason for, so when you exist, it messes, messes with a lot of different functions that come with your day-to-day -day lifestyle. Let's go ahead and start with this. Have you ever said, I don't want to have the struggle like my parents did? Did you realize you, didn't, you never asked your parents why they struggled like they did? But you committed to something very early on in your years of life that you had no idea what you're committing to? Did you know eventually, more than likely, you can make more money than them, but you can still have the same struggles and same existence as them? Did you realize nothing has gone anywhere? That's, cue in on that. We cannot want to, but that becomes your reason for living. You have committed to something that you don't fully understand. Now, I can say that because absolutely, I was, that, I was definitely that dude. Okay? And especially as far as business ownership. I got into business ownership and I was arrogant saying, well, yeah, nobody else in my family you know, owns a business, so they can't really appreciate the things I go through. Well, is that, was that right or wrong? Don't know. Well, it was wrong because I was operating arrogantly. I was trying to head to, to a particular path. I was arrogantly operating from this statement right here. And so inevitably I was starting to create the same lifestyle. It was just a different way of existing. Same thing about that 600 pound life. I just had a different struggle. I still was struggling with existence. I was still struggling with survival. Nothing has went anywhere. Survival compromises the following. It compromises, it compromises your decision making. It compromises your ability to leap. It compromises your communication. It compromises your whole character. It also compromises your dependability, your longevity, understanding, and vision. So let's go ahead and address a couple of these. <clears throat> let's start with longevity. How do you feel like this definition of survival, the state or fact of continuing to live or exist, or if you're in survival, you're right here, right? typically in spite of an accident or a deal or difficult circumstances, that you have any type of longevity thoughts if you're just existing. Because everything, all your commitment is in the moment. Because as you exist, everything in the moment, you don't know, you're looking for life, you're looking for a purpose, so everything is going to be sensitive for you. You're going to receive life in such a, Huge, you're trying to consume the whole thing. And consuming the whole thing, you're going to take it moment by moment by moment by moment, and that's all you can think about. So everything's going to bother you from that place. So you can't think of anything long term. The possibility of long term is you can say long term 
is five years. It's not, that's quite a long time. Well, that's relative to what you're lining up five years to, because you can say, I'll give it five years, and if it's not done by five years, I quit. Do you realize you just had a survival statement? You gave yourself an out? You've already committed to survival in that statement? You didn't say, I'm going to see this through all the way through? You're protecting yourself, aren't you? There's no longevity if you're trying to protect yourself through everything, if you're not vulnerable. Can you and be in survival and exist and not be vulnerable and be vulnerable at the same time? Of course not. You're too busy trying to protect. So if you're too, too busy trying to protect, you're going to stay in the moment. Your understanding. Have you ever tried to filter through, through your understanding and you have pain? It's hard to really try to conceptualize what somebody's even saying. Because you'll, you'll receive in a complete opposite. You'll filter, you'll filter what people are saying and what you're understanding through a filter of pain. And when you filter it through pain, it's going to digest in you completely different than what you expected it to. But in the way of survival, it is okay based on how you're surviving, based on just existing. That becomes a lifestyle. What about your communication? We just gave an example of communication, but we'll address a couple of more things here. But um, yeah, that's all right for now. Yeah, that's cool, whatever. Are you being definitive in your speech? Are you giving clear direction to your life and the people around you? And also, are you giving clear direction to yourself? Not at all. So then if this is what you're going on, how do you feel like you're going to be a leader? I want you to remember that one particular statement right there. How do you feel like you're going to be a leader? But guess what? You're a business owner now. But guess what? You are in operations. But guess what? You're in uh, finance. Let's say you're in um, whatever department that you're in functioning in your in your in your um, business, well, let's say you're the solopreneur and you're functioning in all those departments, right? How are you going to lead yourself if this is your way of understanding, if you understand survival? It's showing up in your business in a lot of different ways, isn't it? So let's talk about this survival statement. Has anybody ever said this? I don't trust anybody. Nope, nope, trust is not for me. Every time I trust, somebody slaps me in the forehead. Not literally, but emotionally, right? So I don't trust anybody. That's why I'm a business owner. You know, I'll just make my own money because I'll make the money that I want. Fair enough. But you're operating from survival, aren't you? Isn't I don't trust anybody a way of saying that you're the most trustworthy person in the world? Aren't you speaking in terms of idolatry? If that's, the, if that's your stance. Yeah, Maurice, you're being vicious. Well, that's how I was. Let me, let me tell you, let me give you my personal story so you don't take it personal. Yes, I was that guy. I don't trust anybody. I couldn't even trust myself. Go figure. I didn't know that, but I guess what? I put myself on a pedestal in order to say I don't trust anybody, but could not make a good decision in my whole life. But in survival, guess what? That's how I existed. It was a way of life. It was easy. Because my pain overrode the reality. Survival is a way of existence and it doesn't have any rules. Because in idolatry, I'm the one making all the rules. You see how that works? So again, open up your hearts means take personal inventory. If you said that, this is you. You said survival, and this could be your state of being. You figured out a way to protect yourself, but all of a sudden you want to go ahead and hire employees because all of a sudden you trust people, but you trust them not because you trust them, but you trust them to make money for you because you can't do it all. So there's a limited amount of trust, isn't there? You see, you see what's going on? You see how this might be showing up in your office space? 
Survival strengthens idolatry. The way that the enemy kills, steals, and destroys, and most importantly, keeps you away from God, he has to continuously put you in places and make it strong. Okay, he has to make your idolatry make reason. It has to make sense. It has to constantly give you a reality of the reason why you're in that place of, I don't trust anybody. He's going to make sure, because if you're in idolatry, one thing the enemy can do is lead you to more reasons and more people that you shouldn't trust. So that way you constantly filter in the pain. Have you noticed that, that you have a cycle of just meeting some of the same people over and over again? Well, guess what? The enemies, hey, meet Joe over there. Yeah, he's really did some crazy stuff in their life and he will mess you up in the heartbeat. And meet that girl over, meet all this. He has created a whole platform of life for you Actually, I shouldn't say a platform of death. Let me make sure I communicate correctly. Oh, my goodness. He has created a platform of death in a way that you should continuously flow in order to make sure that you strengthen up your reason why you should survive. Because if you don't trust anybody, you got to keep your head on the swivel. Oh, shoot. What's about to happen to me now? You know, I mean, because you're so worried about the moment. Have you ever been so deep in your thoughts? Somebody came around the corner. Boom. And I was like, yo, guess what? You were thinking about yourself, weren't you? That's why you got scared. You weren't paying attention to your environment. But you can get so deep into your life, not, you, things constantly hit you. This is that strengthening of idolatry. That's what that looks like. Survival is a habit. It's not something that you want to do. It's something that you're committed to. It's something that makes sense to you because that's the only thing you got. Why do I say that? Let's go ahead and go back to this definition. The state or fact of continuing to live or exist. So you only have two options in this place. If you don't understand living, well, what else are you going to do? You're going to exist. So you have to create a habit of existing. Because that's the only thing comfortable for you at this, at, at this time, at this present day. It's the only thing you know. And so if this is the only thing you know, if this is the definition of what you know, these things, these, so now that you're existing, you are committed to these things as well. The accidents, the ordeals, the difficult situ the circumstances are constantly at your door. Because if I'm going to kill you, if I'm, if I'm the enemy, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to put you in some serious, difficult circumstances so that, that way you kind of consume it. Because there's no way out when you just exist. You only know one way. Because there's two options here, but you only know this way. So I'm going to put you into some serious accidents. I'm going to create some decisions, decision-making that's going to lead you into these so that way you constantly perpetuate the system of survival. It's a habit. It's a system. And that's why you got to look at the other show of habits that we just came from to actually understand what we're talking about here. Now, let's talk about this. Let's get into scripture. Let's get, let's get deeper. Genesis 3, 5, it says, The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes. And that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. She took the fruit and ate it. She gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Now, why do we keep on bringing up the scripture? Because very seldomly do we really understand the kind of the depths of these three things. Because it was good for food, which was already provided for, for them. It was pleasing to the eyes. God already made food that was pleasing to the eyes. So he already took care of that. God already had the wisdom necessary um, in the garden through his instruction, through that relationship. She's, they saw a different pathway. So now what the enemy needs you to do is change your understanding. He needs, he's going to teach you in survival. You're learning a new knowledge. That's the thing about Adam and Eve, because again, you're, you've been separated from God, but you still exist. You're not living, but you exist. 
there's a new knowledge. Survival is a new knowledge that comes with limitations. So when this, when, when you eat of that tree that was desirable for obtaining wisdom, once you gain a new knowledge of something, you start to conform to that new something. But with this new knowledge of survival, if you just exist, guess what? It only comes with limitations. So you can't go any further than what you feel like you have created. Oh, Maurice, I'm, I'm wealthy. I, I got a million dollars in the bank and I got a million dollars coming. Now, did God, let me see. I need to check maybe my scriptures here. But did God said the millionaire will in, inherit the kingdom of God? Did God say that in your, in your casket, you're going to take that million dollars with you into the kingdom? He did not. He said, you're going to take the flesh and blood is just going to be all left behind. So your millionaire has nothing to do with survival. Okay. It can still be a symptom of where we're coming from mankind. It's no different than that 600 pound, 600 pound life. You can be exempt. Because there's a certain structure, and I want you to understand, there's a certain structure each human being has been born with and it was supposed to be operating in. But that 600-pound life is an extension of where they, how far they come from. Same with money. God, didn't, God did not make Adam and Eve with a whole bunch of wealth, in the, in the, in the, the wealth of knowledge and the, the, the environment, of course. But that can be extension of your disobedience. So understand that these are life can be a, very much so an extension. And so just, just make sure we understand the difference. But this new knowledge is a, is a habit that we have as mankind because of our fallen ways. There's a new wisdom out there. And as soon as you start learning the wisdom of survival, you can start to commit to it. Now, structurally, what you will end up inevitably be doing is you'll build what cater towards your flesh and mind. Think about that. Structurally, you will build what caters towards your flesh and your mind. Now, why is that so important? Because your household can be built off of survival. Because you're operating in idolatry for one, right? So let's think about this. Have you ever said, um, the wife is at home with the kids, let's say, and dad's on his way, and she may have talked to him on the phone, and, oh, hey, everybody, be quiet. Your daddy's coming. He's cranky. I don't know what's going on with him. But, oh, my gosh. Well, what happened? Structurally, that husband has developed a household of, of being scared, of survival, because he's coming home. Because an attitude or something has happened. So structurally, you start to conform the whole environments, every environment that you're in, based on your survival ways. Based on your dissatisfaction, your persistent dissatis dissatis dissatisfaction of life. So if you're in that place, and okay, same vice versa, not just the husband, so we don't pick on guys all the time. Maybe it's your wife who has the attitude all the time. And maybe she's the one everybody starts walking on eggshells because she has an attitude. Either way, that dissatisfaction of life has conformed and made the environment just exist and not live. Now, let's fast forward and let's bring it to the office space. Could you create that same office space for yourself? Absolutely. Oh, boss is coming. He's gonna, he or she's going to start going off. Let's just make sure we're okay. Romans 8, 7 reads, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. There's some hostility going on based on where your mind is located. And the rules of the flesh that is following. Whatever shows up in your character shows up in everything that you do. I want you to think about that. If you have this survival going on, whether you think you're doing it or not, it will show up. You can't exempt, exempt from that. Why? Because even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A, a good tree cannot bear um, bad fruit, 
nor can a bad tree um, bear good fruit. Every tree that, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by the fruits, you will know them. So your fruit, your action will show up in every single environment. You're bearing fruit no matter what. Okay, right now, everything that I'm saying, I'm, I'm bearing fruit. That's what's happening. It's happening right in front of us. So Mark 4, 19 reads, Others are like the seed sown among the thorns. They hear the word, but the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke up the word, and it becomes unfruitful. I want you to think about that. You hear the word, but the cares of this life. So when you're in survival, aren't you thinking about the cares of this life all the time? That's where your heart and mind, that's where your mind and flesh are stuck. And then money has this weird way of making you feel secure. So the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things, I'm never satisfied. When you're survival and you're just existing, guess what? Everything is very temporary to your heart and you just need more. In our next show, we're going to talk about the agreement. How does this start to show up into the office space? Because these last two shows, we've been creating framework for your office around survival. Survival is one of the most hidden things that you have going on personally. And it's an emotion that you cannot escape at all. You know, um, I read a few self-help books on when it comes to uh, survival, when it comes to gaining wealth. This is my earlier days in starting the, the, the business. And I ran myself ragged. I, I thought I was going to do multiple streams of income. And I thought I, I created this whole paradigm. And I burnt myself to the midnight and to the point where I was just exhausted. I, the survival thing is, is a serious thing. And it, it goes unchecked and it won't, it won't go away until you address it. Take these next two shows and, and digest it. Digest it with your heart and search it. See if this is you. I want you to use these two shows as, as a freedom point. In our next show, we'll start to talk about how that true freedom is and that life from God. I want to thank everybody for showing up. But in the meantime, I actually have to get back to work. So you guys have a good day. See you next time.